Hello there, this is Beth Gaff, and I am the Media Literacy Coordinator here at the Peabody Public Library. And the first thing I want to tell you about this class, and just about all the stream classes, is that uh, this is geared to go at your pace, which means you can pause, minimize, go away from, come back to at any point when you would like to. Um, I also want to let you know that this is part of uh, the Computer Class Pass Incentive Program. So if you are aware of that and are a part of that, then you know that you need to listen for your secret message inside of this class. Get that to me so I can get you written down for taking the class, and then you will be on your way to prizes. I also want to let you know that this class is not intended to scare anyone or to make anyone feel uncomfortable. So if that is happening to you, please do not continue to watch this, and maybe you would want to talk to me on a more personal level. Um, but I definitely want to encourage those parents to please watch this with their children, or maybe give them some tips that came from this class in regards to their children. This is a very, very serious situation of a class, and it definitely should be taking, uh, should not be taken lightly and should be taken seriously. So without further ado, I want to welcome you to Apps Parents Should Know About and how we can keep our kiddos safe. So let's talk about those devices, shall we? Mom, when can I have a cell phone? I need a cell phone. Everyone's got one. How many times have we heard this and battled our kids with the technology? How many of us have given in and handed over a mobile device that gives our children at the youngest ages complete access to the world? With all of its lures, dangers, with access to predators and opportunities to bully. Many of us feel helpless when faced with both the youthful demand for technology and our own inability to understand how it works and how it can be used or misused. The ever-increasing immersion of social media and its emphasis on creating connections, coupled with easier access to smartphones, has changed the way the world communicates. It isn't a fad or something we can expect to shield our children from forever. When it comes to making technology-based decisions ch with children, every parent needs to be smart, making age-appropriate choices so that this doesn't become a family's nightmare. because we know how quickly little things can turn into big things. And sometimes if we don't know about the little things, then we can't prevent the big things. So making sure that we are aware of the surroundings and technology with our children is very, very important. Okay, so let's take a look at the big picture of the devices with the kids. At first, the thought of providing your child with a cell phone elicits questions of responsibility. Will they lose this expensive device? Will they use too many minutes? Responsibility gives way to fears of abuse of the privilege. Will they communicate in ways that are not appropriate? Does my child know what is acceptable and what would be considered inappropriate in a text or in images? With the prevalence of smartphones, the world rests in the palm of, the, of your child's hand. But think of it as a trip to a major city. There are places where we can walk safely among, into crowds and wanders, and yet it can be all too easy and too quickly, and unexpectedly you could run into danger by taking the wrong turn. Smartphones provide a medium for kids to share lewd or inappropriate messages and, and, and pictures. These devices are all too often the platform used to harass and bully others. Facebook, for instance, has been in the cyber safety spotlight for years with its inappropriate posts, messages, concerns of bullying, and in recent months a new generation of applications or apps have been created that are both appealing and dangerous for children. These apps include features such as self-destructing messages, encrypted messages, free text and group messages, and, GP and GSP location services to connect you with potential friends and dates close by. Some of the applications used most frequently, as well as newer ones appearing almost every day, um, include some of these names, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Skype, Snapchat, Wicker, Kick, Uvu, um, and the list goes on and on. There are three general areas where children get themselves into trouble with their electronic footprints, and these include sexting, cyberbullying, and meeting with strangers they connect with online, and they each represent a cyber 
um, equivalent of taking the wrong turn. So now we're going to take a look at some of these apps that your kids are actually using on a regular basis. Maybe you know and maybe you don't. Um, but I want you to be aware of some of these apps that your children may or may not be on. So um, the social media apps parents should know about is what we're going to talk about now. And I wanted to start out with the first two most common apps that your children are using on a regular basis. Um, a 2013 survey um, by the Pew Internet found that U.S. teens have been waning enthusiasm for Facebook, in part because their parents and other adults have taken over the domain and because their peers engage in too much drama on the site. But Facebook still remains the top social media site among U.S. teens who say that their peers continue to stay on the site so they don't miss anything that's happening there. Your child may keep a profile on Facebook, but be much more active on newer platforms. Uh, and meanwhile, Twitter is, using, is rising among the teens. According to that same survey, they found that 24% of online teens are using Twitter, up to 16 um, are using Twitter, and that's up 16% since 2011. Twitter is the most popular among African American teens with, and then Hispanic and, and, and white teens. I'm not sure what all those statistics mean, but what I do know is that, you know, if you are not monitoring your child while they are on Facebook, um, it could be very, very devastating in the long run. Children are constantly posting things. Cyberbullying is real. It does happen. And uh, that Twitter access feed, it, it, just, it just blows up and enhances the whole situation. So keeping monitoring, you know, your child, if you have a Facebook account, making sure that your child is your friend, close friend, follow them, make sure that you're able to get every single post that they get, every single picture that they that they get. Um, if you are naive to the fact that you may think that your child isn't doing anything wrong, I am here to tell you that more than likely they are. So um, children are, are, if we give them an inch, they're going to take a yard. So you want to make sure that you are definitely keeping up t um, with the Facebook and the Twitter for sure. Um, and these are the more common. The next ones we're going to be talking about, and there are several, um, are not as common, but I wanted you to be familiar with them in case you see these applications on your children's phone. Okay, so the first thing, the first one that I want to go over with you is called Yik Yak. Um, problematic apps that are popular with kids and full of inappropriate content keep popping up. It's like a game of whack-a-mole. Just when you get a handle on one and smack it down, another one pops up. So the latest offender is the app called Yik Yak. Parents could be fooled by the friendly looking Yak logo, but hiding behind this cute face is an app that is causing big problems in schools around the country. Students used Yik Yak to spread rumors of possible school violence at a high school in Mobile, Alabama just last week, and in Massachusetts just the week prior to that. There are a lot of problems with apps, um, and this app, however, seems to, particular, seems to be one of those type of apps. This is being used to cause fear and panic in our schools, and it makes it particularly um, disturbing to the rest of us. The new Yik, Yik Yak app launched just, launched just three months ago um, and reports that more than 100,000 users and 15,000 messages are sent each day. It's spreading like wildfire. Here's what parents should know. The app store states, you must be at least 17 years or older to download this app. This is apparently not stopping anyone. Yik Yak can um, have frequent intense sexual content content, uh, nudity, profanity, crude humor, and references to alcohol, tobacco, or drug use. Um, Yik Yak allows anonymous comments or posts done um, using an alias. Users believe that there is no way to trace the source of the messages, but police were able to arrest a juvenile after investigators learned where the posts were made from receiving help from Yik Yak. 
Um, this leads to posts describing by middle school principal um, and how hurtful it was to them for this. It's an it's excessive cyberbullying tool. Um, Yik Yak knows your location and allows users to discover a live feed of yaks or messages posted by people within five to ten miles of their location. Posters choose to share um, with the closest 100, 250, or 500 yak Yik Yak users. Users have to be signed into the app to receive the messages, but they don't have to have an account. The app encourages discussions of anything and everything and encourages. Share your stories anonymously and get upvotes if people like it. If you need a tool to help explain the to kids what stories should and should not be shared, um, you might want to check online about that. Uh, the description of it in the App Store says, what happens on Yik Yak stays on Yik Yak. Kids are misled by such statements seeming to promise privacy, which sounds similar to Snapchat. Of course, app users cannot control what happens to posts on the internet, which can end up anywhere and be read by anyone. The app was developed by a student um, in Furman University and was intended for the use of college, um, for an on-college campus use. The app has followed the path of many trends and has trickled down to the younger kids, so Yik Yak is now a big in high school and even in middle schools. Schools have objected to Yik Yak, saying it is, is violated their anti-bullying policies. So this is really kind of a big deal. Yik Yak offers two ways to report inappropriate conduct. One way is to have two people select a comment and click the report inappropriate button. The other is emailing an on-screen shot um, for offensive content. So this particular app is very huge in the school systems. They're having a major problem because it's so anonymous um, and you know all these kids think that they're not able to get caught doing anything and we as parents should know better that anything we do isn't sacred and more than likely they are going to be caught for, for that. So if you would see this particular logo on your child's phone or possibly their their um, tablet, you might want to question what they're doing with it because it is geared for college students. They're supposed to be 17 to even have it, but we know as parents it's not hard to get those apps from the app store. Um, it's going to, all it does is ask you if you're old enough and all you have to do is click yes and the next thing you know you have it. So this is um, a very, very scary app for parents to have uh, or for the children of these parents to have. So um, definitely keep an eye out for Yik Yak. So now we're going to move on to Ask.fm. Um, and this is a social networking website set up in a question and answer format that is very popular with teens and the tweens. Um, it has received lots of press attention lately and was e even um, recently referenced in a Florida bullying suicide case. Many parents are unfamiliar with Ask.fm. Um, here are 10 frightening facts about Ask.fm that parents really need to know about when it comes to the site. Um, and most of this is in reference to um, Britain. Uh, a lot of the children over there are using it in Britain. We do have it here in the States, but it, it seems to be pre predominantly over in Britain. But I wanted the parents to be aware of it. Um, Ask.fm's ask Terms of Service state says physical persons must be 13 years or older to use this service. That's right. Tweens are not allowed on Ask.fm. Use this rule to your advantage, parents. You can say no, and the website backs you up, and, and so does COPP, which is Children's Online Privacy Protection Act. Um, it's a federal law in the United States. 13 is the required age to have a Facebook and a Twitter account, too. So if you didn't know that, your child's really supposed to be 13 before they're getting on there. Um, no one monitors the content on Ask.fm. The website states that the Ask.fm service allows for anonymous content, which Ask.fm does not monitor. You agree to use the Ask.fm service at your own risk, and that Ask.fm shall have no liability to you um, for content that you may find 
um, objectionable, obscene, or in poor taste. So as you can see, nobody is monitoring anything that's going on. You only have to be 13 to sign up for it, but we know that those tweens are doing it too. Um, the website is increasingly being used as means to communicate abusive, bullying, and sexual content according to WebWise. Um, it is associated with some of the worst forms of cyberbullying and has been linked to numerous suicides around the world according to the Daily Mail. Um, one user can block another user and must give a reason. Blocking someone, however, does not mean that they go away. A blocked person can still access the profile to view all, all other interactions. Um, the site can be used anonymously so users often have no way of knowing who is bullying or harassing them on the site. Users cannot increase privacy settings as they can with the adjustable settings on Facebook and Twitter. Um, you are not able to do that on the Ask.fm. Ask.fm is integrated with Facebook and Twitter. All these accounts can easily connect and what is posted on Ask.fm is easily shared and can appear on those sites with um, and the next with little to no effort. Um, schools in Britain have advised students and parents to not use Ask.fm. Following the suicide of a 14-year-old girl in Britain who had been bullied on Ask.fm, uh, the British Prime Minister David Cameron says there's something all of us can do as parents and as users of the internet and that is not to use some of these vile sites. Boycott them, don't go there, don't join them. We need to do this as well. I'm very keen. Um, we look at all of the action we can take to try to stop the future tragedies like this. Um, so as you can see, ask.fm, there is no privacy. Everything is anonymous. You can't even reset anything. It can all be connected to Facebook and Twitter. I mean, if this doesn't, if this app doesn't spell danger, I don't know what app would. An anonymous cyberbullying, bullying your child, you have no idea who it is, you can't set any privacy settings on it, and there's nothing that can be done. It can all be linked to Facebook, Twitter, and everything else too. So, if you see this on your child's phone or tablet, you may want to be questioning their use for it and what they may be doing. Um, if it was me, I would tell my child to remove it. There is really no reason, unless they're an adult, to have it. Um, it seems like it's more trouble than it's worth, and we definitely don't want to um, have any more cyberbullying or suicides happening amongst our children. So um, this is Ask.fm, and it is a question and answer app. So another very important app that we need to talk about is the Kick Messenger. This gives you the face-to-face -face feel. And uh, Kick is an app that is very popular with the tweens. It is also not intended to be used by the tweens and can be dangerous for kids with sexual predators using the Kick Messenger to request naked photos or inquire about a teen user's sexual experiences. Here's what parents need to know about Kick. The hugely popular app has that has had 90 million users. Kick is an instant messaging app that is similar to texting, but users have multiple options of talking with individuals, with groups, and within a social networking environment. Users can also use Kick to send photos and files and send greeting cards. It combines texting and a social network. Do we see the problem already? Users are supposed to be the age of 13 or older. That is because it is not in compliant with the COPPA, which is the Children's Online Privacy Protection Act, um, which are the requirements of specific features for a website designed for children, meaning those 12 and under. Kick itself states children under the age of 13 are prohibited, prohibited from having a Kick account by Kick Terms of Service. Um, the site has no age verification, so I'm not quite sure how they're gonna how they're gonna narrow those kids down. Uh, because of the above, Kick does not have parental controls. 
Um, there are reports of loss of graphic images, very sexualized discussions, and predator-like behavior taking place on Kick. Education.com included Kick on its list of the eight worst apps for your kids earlier this year, um, saying it has more to do with young teens flirting and sexting than just keeping in touch with friends. Kick and Instagram can be a dangerous combo, which uh, t tweens and teens often do not realize. Many kids share their Kick username on other public social networks, such as Instagram, which um, which many internet trolls, perverts, or nasty folks see as an invitation. Um, a very high-tech dad wrote a blog about what happened when someone on Instagram asked his daughter's friend for her Kick username. The friend provided it, and via Kick, this unknown individual requested new photos of the girl. Um, just pause and think about that for a minute. For um, innocently posting photos to being solicited by a pedophile. Um, I mean, it just sends a real chill down anyone's spine to think that that is going on with our children, and it is. Uh, there are no records for parents to review, and chats are easily deleted. Kick is all about being consistently connected, stating on its website that a user's smartphone is always on, always connected, and always with you. We see it as an implant. It just hasn't been implanted yet. That's worth keeping in mind when setting phone use limits for your tween or teen. Kick is rated 17 plus um, by both the App Store and the Common Sense Media. The App Store gives the rating due to frequent, intense, mature, suggestive themes. Common Sense Media found it to found it is best for older teens who will not give out personal information to Kick users. They don't know or um, about the paying of the premium features because there are paying premium features. Um, but it definitely adds a kick to the old-fashioned texting by, by all means with the teens. Um, and it could probably use some new safety and privacy guidelines. Um, what if your kid is on kick and you want them off? Uh, parents of kids who are under age 13 who have a kick account must submit a deactivation request to uh, kick via email with a subject line parent inquiry. Kick then sends the parent a deactivation request form, which can be returned to Kick for processing. Uh, teens between 13 and 18 years old need to have permission from their parent or legal guardian before they can create an account and start using it. But we all know that um, that doesn't always stick and that it doesn't make you verify. So therefore, um, you're kind of stuck in a situation with, what do I do? I'm not there when my kid. Um, it's a matter of taking the phone out of your child's hand, taking the tablet out of your child's hand, and going through it and seeing what exactly they're downloading and what exactly they're on. So, um, or they're on, rather. Um, so this kick messenger is just a bad idea. Um, it's definitely attracting those pedophiles out there. And that's the last thing we want is our kids to be in a pedophile type situation. So you definitely want to keep tabs on on the kick messenger with your children. So the next one we're going to talk about is Voxer. And I actually have two different type of um, what the apps look like. I do believe that one, it's been updated. So um, if your child hasn't done the update, you might notice one. Whereas if he has or she has done the update, it may look a little bit different. Um, but Voxer is your walkie-talkie app. This turns your smartphone into a walkie-talkie. In addition to sending voice messages back and forth, Voxer users um, can also send text, photos, or location info. So here's what parents need to know about the Voxer app. Under the Voxer terms of use, it says the service is only for individuals age 13 or older. By accepting these terms, you represent that you are not under the age of 13. This is completely separate from the App Store rating of 4 plus because it is not objectionable content. Just because the App um, Store says it's okay for certain does not mean that it is um, that that is the age requirement of the app itself. So you definitely want to pay attention. Um, this app tells you it's for 4 plus four-year-olds plus, but obviously um, that is untrue. Like most message apps, it can be used in 
Um, it can be used for cyberbullying. In fact, it was one of the apps, in addition to the Ask.com, FM, and Kick, uh, that bullies harassed a 12-year-old girl in Florida who committed suicide this past fall. So um, this falls right along those lines with that Ask.FM and that Kick Messenger. Uh, review with kids that delete on this app on the internet in general is a relative term. Delete is not always permanent. On Voxer or anywhere else on the net, voice messages and images sent through Voxer could be posted by the recipient or sent to other users. Similarly, similarly, parents also need to discuss with young Voxer users that nothing on a smartphone is truly private, including messages and images sent through Voxer. Uh, they can be posted publicly for the entire internet to see. So we definitely want to tell our kids about that. And of course, speaking of privacy, parents need to check both privacy settings and location settings on Voxer. According to McAfee.com, by default, the Voxer app enables the share location and disables the privacy mode. Your kid can be revealing his or her location on other personal information to strangers without even knowing it. And you know as well as I know that children aren't always going to go in there and dig to see what their settings are. So that's up to us as parents. Um, you don't always have a way of verifying who is on the other end of the Voxer account. People have been known to set up fake accounts, which make cyberbullying and other inappropriate behavior easier. This is why parents need to ask the question about all the connections. Um, group messages are possible, not necessarily a bad thing, just something parents need to know and need to discuss with their kids on how to eliminate themselves from certain conversations. One bad apple can send a group conversation south very quickly. Kids count on parents not monitoring Voxer, and uh, this has been used to further the criminal behavior. Uh, just in Pennsylvania, police warned parents about Voxer after a 49-year-old man was charged um, with sexual assault um, and was alleged in a relationship with a teenage girl. Uh, they could communicate via the app without the teen's parents even knowing about it. So that is very, very dangerous stuff. Parents need to be aware that their tweens on that tweens on, are online, and in this case, that's not a bad thing. But some parents really like Voxer as a way to communicate with their kids. Um, it's just a perfect parent travel app for their children. There are times I've been in, um, in different time zones, um, and this is coming from a parent, and they want to leave a good morning message for their child who is asleep. Um, and the best way um, they're finding is by using this Voxer. Um, it's a great example of technology at its finest. It isn't good or bad. It's using it and how it's being used that makes it good or bad. So um, be where your kids are online. Some of the parents on Voxer are making the most of it, uh, which is awesome. But you definitely need to, uh, just like the other apps, you definitely need to keep track of what your kids are doing on these applications and um, monitoring that situation. Again, this is like a this is a walkie-talkie type app, so that means that your children are are communicating very easily. So this is about Voxer. So here's something a little bit more common. We're probably a little bit more familiar uh, with Snapchat than we are with anything else. And this is one of those apps that parents need to know about. If you've seen this app on your child's phone or, or maybe you just know that they're using it. Um, but Snapchat is a social media app for smartphones and computers that allows users to send pictures and videos that is unique in that it claims the images exist for only 10 seconds or less before disappearing. The fact that the images supposedly don't live forever is what has propelled Snapchat to its popularity with 30 million messages a day. It is especially popular with the tweens and the teens. Turns out, though, that despite Snapchat's claims, the messages don't just disappear. Experts previously raised the concern about Snapchat misleading kids because it is pretty clear that nothing on the internet ever disappears, no matter what with Snap, no matter what Snapchat says. Some worried that anyone could take a screenshot of the Snapchat image 
and that screenshot could live forever. Now we know that screenshots are only one concern with Snapchat and that the picture itself really does live forever. The Daily Beast reports a digital forensics company discovered that the app actually saves the images to a hidden folder on the phone called Received Images Snaps. A file extension called No Media keeps the images from being viewed, but the Decipher forensics team has found a way to take the files off the phone and change the extension, making them viewable again. Decipher is currently charging $300 to $500 to extract the photos. The Daily Beast found that it that to be comforting, but I can see a collection being taken up in the junior high lunchroom that reaches that figure pretty quickly if there's something students really want to see. The money is not what the issue is is what the issue is when it coming when it comes to retrieving snapchat images um, the issues are a the fact that nothing on the internet goes away ever and b tweens an alarming number of adults often seem to not realize the fact that what you post online can and does live forever so just keep that in mind when you see your kids doing those little selfies and I see my kids doing them all the time they're doing little selfies and they are or their little videos and they're sending them to their friends and they can see them for 10 seconds and um, well we know now that they don't really go away they're still there and it's been proven that kids will pay money to get copies of these pictures so um, again snapchat not a horrible program but it definitely something to be monitored um, by you, the parent, to make sure that your child isn't doing inappropriate things. Because we know um, even in 10 seconds, um, our whole reputation could be ruined in 10 seconds. So uh, keep that in mind when you're talking to your kids about these applications. I just want to touch briefly on the POKE, which is a Facebook um, Poke is a Facebook app that is similar to Snapchat um, that promises the photo will self-destruct within seconds after they've received it. While Poke isn't nearly as popular as Snapchat, it is still gaining younger users that can, who can use it for sexting. Um, also like Snapchat, the images sent via Poke can be saved or viewed with certain work workarounds. Um, the App Store rates it ages 4 plus, but it is connected to Facebook, which is a 13 plus site. So if that tells you anything about Poke, this is a very similar to Snapchat that these kids think that their stuff is going to self-destruct and nobody's going to know where it is, and that just simply isn't true. So um, this is another one of those Facebook Poke is another one of those um, applications that if you see this on your child's phone, you may want to question it and see what your child's kind of getting themselves into. So the next one we're going to talk about is Vine. And Vine is Twitter's mobile app that allows users to shoot and share short loops of video, six seconds or less. Um, it is rated 17 plus, but children and teens are still downloading it. Um, as with any multimedia app, the content on Vine runs um, from naughty to nice. So with the most basic creative searching, kids can find nudity, sex, drug use, offensive language, hardcore sexuality, and more. Common Sense Media says um, in its review of the app, while there are plenty of cute, fun videos, even adults might be shocked at some of the things that they may find on Vine. So, this is a Twitter link, but it's its own link, if that makes any kind of sense at all. And you definitely want to um, find out what your kids are doing with Vine. It doesn't sound like they can be doing anything good um, if they're using it the way that this is stating. There's way too many applications out there. And, um, you know, you may want to go in and, and see if your child has this Vine app and sit down and talk to them about the use of the Vine app and what exactly they're using the Vine app for. Alright, so the next one we're going to touch base on is Whisper and this is a secret sharer. 
<clears throat> Whisper is a free social networking app available for iPhone and Android um, and website. It's found at whisper.sh. Uh, that encourages users to share secrets. The app was originally intended and first became popular on college campuses, but like many trends, has been trickled down to a younger crowd. It is becoming popular with tweens and is something parents absolutely need to know about because it can be very unsafe. Um, the app and website encourages users to post pictures and share secrets anonymously, as well as chat with other whisperers. The whisperers are text ex expression of secrets placed over um, stylized images. Whispers tag whispers. Uh, tagline is express yourself, share secrets, meet new people. I am a little confused on how one meets anonymous new people. So think about that one for a second. Uh, Whisper is rated 17 um, and over by the App Store due to as part of frequent, intense, mature, subjective, um, suggestive themes. Predators have been known to use Whisper to contact victims. Uh, detectives in Seattle said that a man admitted to using Whisper to arrange him to meet a 12-year-old for sex. The Whisper use, um, user said she was 14, uh, but still it's illegal. I don't care what state you're in. That is still illegal, 12, 14, and you're a grown man. And the predator and her um, had sent sexual photos back and forth to each other. He then drove to her house and told her by phone how to sneak out um, and how he and how she can uh, get to a hotel with him. So that is extremely scary. Whisper reveals a user's location, which can be uh, problematic and even dangerous. If you've enabled location services, your whispers can show up in a list of nearby whispers, which increases the possibility that you're not so anonymous after all. Um, that also makes it easier for whispers to arrange to meet you, um, which is very, very bad for, for the victim and the predator. Um, the app requires a PIN to look through the history. This is an example of why parents need their children's username and password or PIN for absolutely everything. And if parents are going to permit tweens and teens to use Whisper or similar apps, it is absolutely essential that they monitor their children's use on this. Uh, teens and tweens use Whisper to cyberbully other kids. It's not rocket science that apps like this can be used by students her to harass their peers, but kids take it a step further and whisper um, about school faculty. The problem of the cyberbullying on Whisper, particularly, is the instance of inappropriate comments made on the app following the death of a North Carolina high school student um, has prompted an online petition on change.org for Whisper to change its cyberbullying and age policy. Whisper's terms of use states that users acknowledge and agree that transmissions over the internet can never be completely secure and you understand that any messages or information that you transmit uh, might be um, intercepted and read by others even if we take measures to prevent such interceptions. Many tweens and teens simply do not understand that whatever they put on the internet. So uh, the terms of use also say whisper text cannot guarantee users will encounter um, objectionable content on the service. Whisper is popular and expanding. In August 2013, it has more than 2.5 billion page views, and in the following month, it secured an additional an additional 21 21 million dollars in funding um, by that fall in October. Um, Whisper had 4 million users. Whisper doesn't appear to be going anywhere, and in fact, it is hoping to grow, making it more likely to attract those tween users. So, as we can hear, um, this is a bad, bad news for all you parents out there. You definitely want to keep a good eye on your kids if they're using Whisper, because things can be anonymous, nothing's monitored, um, Kids are meeting adults, setting up meet times, parents are clueless. You know, that's the whole thing here. Don't be clueless. That's the whole thing. Just don't be clueless. Ask questions. Who, what, where, when, why, and how will get you a long way. So if you see this on your child's account, you might want to find out what they're doing with it. You might want to get in there and kind of look around. 
If you don't normally take your children's username, passwords, or pins, now would probably be a good time to do that. Um, I would hate for something terrible to happen to anyone's children um, just because we didn't take that extra measure. So this was about Whisper, and this was that secret sharer. If you're a part of the Computer Class Pass Incentive Program, your secret code is keeping my kids safe. Give me that code so I can get you marked down for taking this class and be on your way to winning prizes. Not sure what I'm talking about? Give me a call and I'll explain to you the Computer Class Incentive Program. Okay, so moving right along, the next one we're going to talk about is Tumblr. Um, and Tumblr is popular with teens and tweens. It's a microblogging site that provides a platform for blogging that is super simple and user friendly. Um, an important kids safety question, does your teen have a tumble blog? If so, there are six important things about the site that you should know. Tumble blogs are public blogs and there is no way to change the setting. But there is a loophole. Your child can set up a second tumble blog that can be password protected and neglect the primary one, which is public by default. Does that make a whole lot of sense to you? Not to me. The blog features um, has limitations. If your child is being harassed or just doesn't like a certain Tumblr user, they can block that person from communicating with them, um, but they can't block them from seeing their blog. So keep that in mind. There is no minimum age to join. Your child only needs an email address to register, so it's really easy to set up a Tumblr account without ever bringing it to your attention. Um, you may have heard of Tumblr, but your teen may already have a Tumble blog. So um, kind of be thinking about that. Content is unrestricted. Administrators aren't reviewing content or monitoring what's going on unless someone reports um, it as inappropriate. Bloggers and their parents have the primary responsible for what is posted. So you have to be responsible for what your child is posting on the internet. Tumblr encourages collaborate blogging. Tumblr makes it easy for blogs to be co-authored by two, three, or a hundred kids. Um, they also provide a widget that allows bloggers to accept guests' posts from visitors on their site. If your child co-blogs with others, make sure that they have first agreed on some safety rules about what's okay to post and what isn't. Um, Tumblr makes impulse posting easy. Users are encouraged to share anything they happen to see online with a share on Tumblr bookmarker marker, um, and they can even do it by email or mobile phone. So make sure they think twice before clipping, clicking on that bookmark um, is a really good um, to make sure that that post is a really good post or, or not. Tumblr makes it easy for kids to create a blog without spending hours and hours learning HTML and the web design. It's a great way for them to get a feel for the medium. Just make sure to discuss internet safety and look over their shoulder occasionally when they're posting. Most importantly, visit their blog regularly, see what's new. Not only will it assure you that your child isn't posting anything they shouldn't, um, it will probably give you a lot of insight into your child's world that you otherwise wouldn't have had. So this one's a little bit lesser of the evils, um, but you're still dealing with the internet and you're still dealing with um, possible predators and, and things to that effect. So you definitely want to find out if your child has a tumble blog. Um, if they do, you may want to find out how you can get connected to it. Well, this should definitely look familiar to you. Um, Instagram. What kids don't use Instagram? What adults don't use Instagram? Um, Instagram is a popular photo and video sharing and social networking site with millions, including tweens. It's all photos, right? So keeping kids safe on Instagram isn't a concern, right? No. While Instagram is a hugely popular among tweens and even elementary age kids, and many use it without incident, there are issues and parents absolutely need to be aware and informed. Aside from the stated age requirement of 13, parents must know about privacy, cyberbullying, and content concerns about Instagram. So let's start from the beginning with Instagram. What is it? It's an app that permits users to post pictures and videos taken with their smartphone to a social network. People within a user's network then like and comment on those images and vice versa.
Tweens may say that they are using it to be artistic, and it's true that there are beautiful photos on Instagram, but it can be a photo of anything, and you can see a bit of everything on Instagram from pics of ice cream and Sundays and sunsets to inappropriate sexual pictures and images of school of alcohol and drug use. Um, you can also write out messages, photograph the paper, and post it. So who's using it? Um, Instagram has 150 million monthly users, 60% of them outside of the United States. Um, that statistic um, includes millions of tweens. Kids and tweens use Instagram as a way to um, um, restrict those parental controls like there are on the other social networking sites. Um, they want to say something about someone else. Uh, they write it down, take a photo and post it, or comment on someone else's photo. Suddenly Instagram is not all that different than any other sites. Um, what is the age requirement? Like most of the other social networking sites, Instagram requires users to be age 13 and over per their terms. Um, you can report an underage user here and find instructions on how parents can delete an account. So it is a little bit easier when it comes to that, that information. Um, what are the privacy settings? Instagram gives users two options, private or public. Either way, um, bios are visible to all and can be where predators start looking for underage victims. With the public setting, anyone signed into Instagram application can view photos or videos on a public user's Instagram profile. Once you set your post to private, anyone who wants to see your child's post will have to send your child a follow request, which they can then approve or ignore according to Instagram. Uh, when signing up, the, the user has the option to include a phone number as part of their public profile. Sociallyactive.com points out um, phone number. That's a bad idea, parents. Bad idea. Um, it is also important to note that Instagram reveals users' location. Another bad idea, parents. When I created an account, one of the first things it showed me um, was other users near me. Many of them were my daughter's classmates and showed me where they lived. How scary is that? So, also shared photographs can be uh, geotagged, revealing the location of the photo using the latitude and longitude. Instagram encourages users to create a photo map. Uh, while it is impossible to turn that off, it clears from my usage that most tweens and teens don't do so, and the world knows exactly where they are and where they have been. So, what other info is shared? Kids on Instagram inadvertently share information. Um, a bunch of kids shared photos of their school schedules to determine who had class together. Seems harmless, right? But those schedules included information like address, phone number, and school um, And some school schedules include social security numbers. This is not info you want your child broadcasting to the world. Um, so with whom is this all shared and can my kid connect with strangers on Instagram? Um, even if the privacy settings are set to private, do you know who is following your child or your children? Do your kids even know them? Uh, the number of followers kids have is often quite high and they're typically, they are typically friends of friends and can be strangers. Parents need to ask um, all those types of questions. It's very important that you know what your child is getting themselves into. Um, you know, my kids tell me it's harmless. Is that true? Nope. Similar to the other social networking sites, Instagram can be used by tweens and teens by for the cyberbullying purpose of peers. In fact, parents in Texas are filing a lawsuit about an Instagram account that cyberbullied their teen daughter for nine months with 900 followers. Um, the site, and we won't name the school or, or the child, um, featured photos of one girl in particular. Um, that specific account was taken down after the parents of the targeted girl got a restraining order. Um, the parents are filing a lawsuit against the teens behind the account for libel and all of their parents for 
um, negligence based on the Instagram account created to shame their teenage daughter. So we can see how um, kids don't really have to be all that creative anymore to get in trouble, parents. Um, all they got to really do is download one of these applications and start doing inappropriate things on them. And the next thing you know, you're in court and it's criminal or worse, something's happened to your child. So, you know, just taking that extra few minutes and talking to your child about some of these sites and what they're using them for, snatching that phone and taking a look, um, you are their parent and you have that right. So, we just got done talking about Instagram and this is photo sharing um, that's owned by Facebook. And uh, obviously we learned today that it's more than just photo sharing. So the next one we're going to talk about is called Shots of Me. Um, this is a selfie only photo sharing. Uh, Justin Bieber has invested in this 12 plus selfie only photo sharing app in part because he was attracted to its anti-trolling aspect. It does not have a comment section under photos posted on the app. Instead of a public comment area, the app has a direct messaging feature where users can only send private messages to one another. Do we see a problem here? I sure do. Uh, the anti-trolling feature might also help ward off cyberbullying among teens who like to put meanness, meanness or display uh, but teens could still be nasty via private message. The app does show a user's location and how long ago a photo was added unless those features are managed in the app settings. Shots of Me is currently available only in the, for Apple devices. Um, it's not the only selfie-centered photo sharing app. Another one is called Front Back. It has a split screen that allows users to simultaneously share a regular photo and a selfie. So if you think think a photo of the ocean and a selfie of the photographer sitting happily in a beach chair and easily can easily reveal their location. So this is a selfie only photo sharing app called Shots of Me um, and it doesn't allow captions so you can't necessarily say nasty things to each other on those pictures but you can still private message each other the same type of nasty material. So this kind of falls in the lines of some of the other ones. And this is that selfie only photo sharing shots of me. The next one we're going to talk about is uh, Wanilo, which stands for want, need, love. This combines shopping, fashion blogging, and social networking all in one. It's very popular among teens, allowing them to discover, share, and buy products they like. Why is it popular? Teens keep up with the latest styles by browsing Winilo's trending feed, which um, aggregates the items that are most popular across the site. They can also um, learn their own style through the My Feed function, which displays contact from the user's brands and stores they follow. So what parents need to know? If you like it, you can buy it. Users can purchase almost anything they see on um, we Weenalo by clicking through to products original sites. So again, they can just buy things and you won't even know they're doing it until you get the bill. Uh, brand names are prominent. Upon registering, users are required to follow at least three stores, for example, Forever 21 or Marc Jacobs, um, and at least three people. Uh, many are other everyday people in the Winilo network, uh, but there are also publications like Seventeen Magazine. There's plenty of mature clothing. Uh, you may not, you may not love what kids find and put in their wish list. Winilo could lead to even more arguments over what your teen can and can't wear. So again, this is one of those lesser of the evils, but I wanted to share it with you, and primarily I wanted to share it with you because those kids are able to get on there and they're able to buy things um, and without you even knowing that they're doing it. And if you don't want your kids wearing certain types of clothing, um, then, you know, how are you going to monitor it with Wanilo if they're just doing it?
and not telling you about it. And I know we all want to believe that our children are 100% honest, but let's be honest about that. And we know that that isn't, that is not true. So we definitely want to take a look at the Wanilo application. If you see this on your child's app, you might want to find out what they're doing with it, find out if they're buying clothes, um, find out more of that type of information in regards, again, this is one of the lesser um, that you have to worry about, but it is still something out there that parents should know about. Okay, so the next one we're going to talk about is Uvu. And, you know, these apps could go on all day long. I'm only showing you um, a very small portion of what some of the apps are. Um, but the Uvu is a free video voice and messaging app. Users can have group chats um, with up to 12 people for free. The premium version removes ads from the service. So that's all it does. You can still do everything you're doing. All it does is take away your ads. Why is it so popular? Um, te teens mostly use Uvu to hang out with friends. Many log on after school and keep it up while doing homework. Uvu can be great for group studying and it makes it easy for kids to receive face-to-face -face homework help from classmates. What parents need to know. Um, you can only chat with approved friends. Users can only communicate with those on their approved contact list, which can help ease parents' um, safe, safety concern unless they're adding people they shouldn't be adding. Um, it can be distracting. Because the service makes video chatting so affordable and accessible, it can be also addictive. A conversation with your kids about multi multitasking may be in order. Um, kids still prefer in-person communication. Though apps like Uvu make it easier um, than ever to video chat with friends, research shows that kids still value face-to-face -face conversations over online ones, especially when it comes to sensitive topics. Still, they sometimes find it hard to log off when all their friends are on. So, you're kind of dealing with a Skype, and you can tell that I didn't add Skype in to our class today. Um, but Uvu definitely falls in those lines. That's why I've got that Skype picture there. So if you think Skype, think Uvu because it's the same thing. And we all know how dangerous Skype can be in the hands of our children. So make sure, again, that you are monitoring what your child is doing. You're setting up those privacies for them. And you've got all their passwords and PIN codes and, and so forth and so on so that there's nothing going on that you don't know about. And again, this is Uvu. Um, and it's chatting and also um, video chat as well as, as Skype. So the last one I'm going to talk to you about um, within this class, and again, I can't express enough um, how many, many more apps. I mean, apps like this are being made by the thousands every day. So I can't express to you, how, you know, once one goes away, you're going to have 10 more for that one. So this is just touching base on some of them to let you know what your kids are doing when they're not on Facebook and Twitter. Um, the next one is called Feed. Um, and Feed is best described as a hybrid of Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube, except that you can require others to pay a premium to access your personal channel. So not only now are you able to do all those things that we've been talking about for Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube, but now you can charge people to watch your stuff. <laughs> How crazy is that? So why is it popular? Feeds multimedia all-in-one offering seems to be capturing teens' attention the most. Some teens um, also like the fact that they have more control over ownership and copyright, copyright since Feed allows users um, allows its users to watermark their original content, which means they can try to make it to where nobody can get a hold of it, copy it, or have anything to do with it, but we all know how that kind of content works. So what do parents need to know? It's hot. According to Forbes, Feeb has swiftly become the number one free social app in the App Store, thanks um, in large part to teens. Time will tell whether artists and celebrities will jump on the bandwagon and start using feed to promote themselves and change their fans' view of what they post. Um, the users can make money now. Users can charge others a subscription fee to access their content, ranging from $1.99 to $34.99 per view, or the same price range per month. Note that a cut on all proceeds goes to feed. So even though you're 
you know, your kids can be charging somebody to look at all their stuff, um, feed is going to get a cut of that. Okay? Think about how scary this is. This is almost like video prostitution, really. I mean, it could almost be like video prostitution in and around about. Uh, your privacy updates are in the works. Kids should be aware that their posts are currently public by default and therefore searchable online. So, how scary is all of that? This feed is an all-in-one. It's your Instagram. It's your Twitter. It's your Facebook. It's your, it's your all of it. And now, you can charge people to use it. You can charge your friends to see pictures of you naked if you want to. And I don't mean to be graphic, but come on, let's get real. Well, that's what the kids are going to be doing with it. Um, or maybe not. But this is definitely not setting them up um, for a positive, positive result in the end. So if you see feed, please remember that it's an all-in-one. Your kids are probably making money off of it. And they're probably not doing appropriate things. So there's more to it than just the watermark content. It's that all-in-one. So this is what feed is. The next thing I want to talk to you about is um, jailbreaking programs and icon hiding apps. Uh, these aren't actually social media apps, and they're a bit confusing, but you should still know about them, especially if you have a tech-savvy teen or have had to take away your child's mobile phone privileges because of abuse. Jail, uh, jailbreaking an iPhone or rooting an Android phone basically means hacking your own device to lift restrictions on allowable applications, meaning the user can then download third-party apps not sold in the App Store or Google Play Store. Um, it's hard to say how many teens have jailbreak broken their mobile device, but Instructions on how to do so are readily available on the internet. Cydia is a popular application for jailbreaking phones. And it's a gateway to other apps called Poof and SB Settings, which are icon hiding apps. These apps are supposedly intended to help users clear the clutter from their screens. But some, peop some young people are using them to hide the questionable apps and violent games from their parents. So be aware of what the Cydia app icon looks like, and that is what is pictured here in front of you, so that you know if you're getting a complete picture of your teen's app use. Um, being able to jailbreak is extremely easy. I have actually done it myself on a few of my iDevices, and it just allows you to get um, applications that were not actually purchased from the from the uh, Play Stores, whether it's the Google Play or iTunes, they've chosen not to have them. Um, but Cydia picks them up, and your children are able to download them. So I wanted you to be aware that your children can jailbreak their their devices either by rooting it, and it's called rooting if you have an Android, or jailbreaking if you have an iPhone. And then you're able to get those third-party apps. Um, so you just want to kind of be a little bit ahead of the game here and maybe even ask your child. Now, the jailbreaking process, um, again, you can get those steps online. If not done correctly, could destroy and ruin the device altogether. So you want to make sure that if they are doing it and you are aware of it, that they're not ruining that expensive piece of equipment uh, that has been purchased for them to use. So uh, jailbreaking programs and icon hiding apps is what this was about and those are for those third-party applications. So just kind of keep a good eye on your children and try to keep uh, good communication between you and them. That way you would know if they were doing something like this. The next subject that we're going to talk about is a little bit touchy, um, but I do think that parents need to be aware, and I know we've all heard of it, and we don't want to believe that our child would be capable of doing something like this, but we really can't be naive to the thought that it is happening with our child. Um, so right now I want to talk to you about sexting among teens, and sexting has been a rising phenomenon among teens for the past few years. Among teens aged 12 to 17 surveyed on their cell phone use, 15% said that they have received a sext 
from someone they knew personally, and 4% of that group reported having sent sexually suggestive uh, nude or nearly nude images or videos of themselves to someone else via text messaging. Of the 14 to 19 year olds surveyed, 28% said that they have sent a naked picture of themselves through text or email. And that was brought to us from Pediatrics and Adolescent Medicine, uh, the July 2012 um, issue for those statistics. The newer cell phone applications provide a platform for children and teens to send and share lewd photos, videos, texts, and drawings to a controlled list of recipients. Snapchat makes teen sexting easy. The applications made main demographic is a user for users between 13 years to 24 years of age. It is the fourth most popular iPhone app, up to a thousand photos sent per second. Snapchat creates the illusion of security for teens to engage in sexting because they can choose the recipients and the pictures and videos are advertised as disappearing immediately with no permanent record. This also prevents parents from monitoring. However, this is a false sense of security because the recipient can take a screenshot of the content and share with anyone else. Once the sender hits send, the image cannot be recovered and there is no way to prevent a recipient from saving and sharing it with the others. The sender is notified if a screenshot is taken, but the permanent evidence is still out there. When searching Twitter for the term Snapchat, numerous tweets for people to sex through the app are revealed, such as, hit me up with the cleavage on Snapchat. Snapchat. Wicker allows anyone to send encrypted text messages, video, pictures, PDFs, etc. to anyone else with the app. It creates the appearance that it is a safe outlet for teens to share lewd images and other content. Just like Snapchat, however, nothing prevents the recipient from saving the content and sharing it with others later. Even though the messages are advertised as self-destructing, this is... There is nothing within the application that prevents a recipient from storing a message and sharing it with another person. Kick is being used by some teens to send and receive nude pictures, which can be seen in the user reviews with posts of sexual invitations and advertisements. Kick can connect you with people you do not know through other social media sites. Since a Kick profile is independent, one can never be sure of who is actually on the other end. Information sent via Kick is not secure because like both Snapchat and Wicker, nothing prevents the recipient from saving, storing, and sharing something you send, hoping for privacy. So this is pretty huge, parents. Um, our kids are are doing inappropriate things, not just through their sexting, but some of those apps that we had talked about earlier and um, they are sharing this information with their peers and then it's getting out there to their other peers. Um, privacy is sacred and children really do need to learn that privacy is sacred and their bodies are sacred and what they do cannot be undone. Um, I just recently watched a show where there was a beauty pageant queen um, that was on there that had been stripped of all of her um, royalties, I guess we would say, due to the fact that a year prior to that, she had actually sent a nude photo to a boyfriend that she thought would be private because they were dating. And after she got, um, after she received her crown, one of her jealous friends um, knew about the picture. The boy and her had broken up since then and ended up writing the pageant judges and letting them know that this had gone on and actually sent them a picture of it and she was stripped of all royalties and she wasn't allowed to do anything else. Now, that is just something that came back to haunt her and just to kind of bite her a little bit. So we definitely can, can change our future and can change the things that we want to do. So it's very important that we talk to our children about sexting and how important it is to keep what's private private and because it can come back around and hurt things that you want to do in the future. So I'm not going to go into this in great detail. I think you kind of get the idea. 
but sexting in teens is a huge issue when it comes to those digital devices and um, how the children are using them. So having good communication with your kids, making sure that you're keeping things private, take those devices away if you notice something out of the ordinary that just doesn't seem right, because if we ignore it, then it's just going to keep going on. So, again, if you have questions about this topic or you want to discuss it with me and your child, please get in contact with me. I would have no problem with that. But I just wanted you to know that um, sexting in teens, it is real and it is happening. So if you, um, you know, if you don't think your child is doing it, and they very, very well may not be, but it's not um, something that you want to put on the back burner if you think that there might be something going on. You definitely want to address it. Um, and talk to your child. Now we're going to talk about cyberbullying and the rise of cyberbullies. Uh, while the issue of bullying is nothing new, bullying over the internet or electronic platforms, often referred to as cyberbullying, has brought the conduct to a new level of, of destructiveness. These social media applications provide a far-reaching medium for cyberbullying to occur. These platforms are used to widely share everything from nasty messages to embarrassing photographs or videos. Often, compromising photos and videos are taken and shared by a victim who trusted the original recipient, only to be betrayed later when that trusted recipient shares the embarrassing content with others, all to harass or hurt the sender. Cyberbullying has become the way teens gang up on one another electronically, either by sending taunting pictures and messages or using more under the radar spheres to spread rumors about the victim, tease, or embarrass another person. The impact of the internet on this conduct is that it extends the reach of this teenage nastiness far beyond the walls of a local school or community. Cyberbullying allows a bully to spread gossip and embarrassment of a victim exponentially, maximizing the amount of damage inflicted on a victim. The same platforms teens are using for sexting are being used to cyberbully. Using Wicker, bullying text messages are both encrypted and can be set to self-destruct. This it creates the illusion of non-traceable evidence. Photos and messages a sender thinks are secure and or deleted can be saved and shared with unintended recipients through other mediums, like a screenshot or an outside photo. Leaving the possibility of this evidence being used against them and or to embarrass them. The single most um, prolific social media site used today by cyber bullies is Facebook. Whether posting embarrassing information, spreading rumors or gossip, or sharing photographs of a victim, bullies use this medium to spread embarrassing and hurtful content about other kids. Using Snapchat, photos can be sent with drawings and notes and then set to self-delete. These images are um, designed to ridicule or embarrass a victim in the hopes that no one will save the image or the message. Kick allows group messaging where text, photos, videos, and other content can be shared and select group of people. It is a perfect venue for mocking a victim who may be excluded from the group. It provides a vehicle for spreading rumors and embarrassing images. Some of the other platforms are often used by individuals masquerading as someone else to bully, harass, or stalk a victim. Through these platforms, some bullies have created fake relationship and used them to gather personal in information designed to embarrass a victim. Cyberbullying is extremely real. Um, it's not any different than the normal bullying that we're used to, except kids are doing it electronically now instead of face-to-face. We, there are many, many, many incidences where children just really take this stuff to heart and they feel like their whole lives are ruined due to the fact that um, another child has violated their privacy. So, talk to your children about cyberbullying. If you're noticing some strange, some behavior in your child that you didn't notice before, this could be part of that. So you definitely want to keep that communication going with your child and how you can um, cut through that to get rid of the teasing, the insults, the threats, the name calling. Kids can be extremely cruel. So 
as parents, you should know what you need to do to help your child when it comes to cyberbullying and ganging up on one another electronically. I'm not going to talk a whole lot about predators, um, but I do want to touch base with you on things that predators are looking for. I chose the uh, Predators movie picture just because it just kind of seemed appropriate because you can have multiple uh, predators that are, that are after you. And what is a predator's dream? Um, apart from what teens do to each other, these platforms offer predators a new place to catch their prey. Predators can create fake profiles and provide misleading information to lure victims to meet them. Many of these applications connect you with people within a close proximity to your location. In doing so, they can create easy opportunities for teens to meet these new friends. Investigator call, investigators call these apps a predator's dream because they allow creeps to create accounts portraying themselves as teens and immediately access profiles for hundreds of actual teens. Courthouses across the United States are filled with cases involving adults who meet, teens, who meet with teens from online, often from predatory purposes. The lucky ones are the teens wise enough to report this conduct before they go out to meet the predator, allowing law enforcement to catch the criminal before something bad happens. Those who meet first are often hurt before a report can be made and must then live with the consequences of the predator's actions. Another gruesome practice is the predator using social media to collect potentially embarrassing information about a teen, whether personal information or sexting images, and then using extortion techniques to force the child to share more contact or risk exposure. Across the country, there have been too many cases of teenagers falling victim to these predators and continuing to share more and more sexual communications for fear of their secrets being revealed. So, predators are out there. They're creating these fake profiles. They're pretending to be the age of your child. Your child is maybe not yours, just in general. Children are friending these people, claiming that they know them when they more than likely do not. I always tell my children, if you don't go to school with them and see them on a daily basis, then they're not your friend. And you shouldn't be adding them to anything if you don't know who they are. But kids will be kids, and if we aren't monitoring them, and we aren't giving them guidelines or rules, and we're just letting them run freely with these devices, then they're going to do, they're going to go that extra mile. They just are, because that's what happens. I mean, I think about myself at a young age and the things I was doing, you know, I wasn't nearly into, you know, there wasn't the technology then and parents, I'm sure you can can relate to what I'm saying. We didn't have the technology then. So now kids are being are easily able to get in trouble without even leaving their house. I can remember a time where you actually had to leave your house to get in trouble. Well, you don't have to do that anymore. And the scary thing even about that is that if, you, if the children are meeting these predators somewhere, what's to say that they won't come back to the home where the rest of the family is? So communication with your child is key. And keeping track of what they're doing is also key. Uh, take their phone every now and then. Look and see what they've got downloaded. If you see that jailbroken Cydia app, I would redo the, redo the device altogether and get them back on track where they need to be. They don't need it jailbroken. They don't need those third-party apps um, because illegal activity can happen that way. So best thing we can do is try to keep our, our kids safe. And the next few slides that we're going to, or at least the next one we're going to talk about is how we can keep our kids safe. Okay, so now I want to talk to you about uh, tips to keep your kids safe. Uh, what is a parent to do? It is easy to raise concerns. Not so easy to figure out the best way to handle technology in teens. I have got six tips for parents trying to navigate the treacherous waters of giving teens access to technology and guiding them to use it safely. Number one, as parents we need to create ground rules. If you provide the phone, you make the rules. Start when your child is young and set limits and enforce them. If your child breaks your rules, you can impose consequences. If the violation is severe, you can take away the privilege of having the device. 
Number two, communication. You need to talk openly and honestly with your child about the public nature of any information shared via social media and the internet. You need to address the ways that information can be compromised and how any person can become a victim. You need to teach your child about how to protect personal information to avoid being compromised. At the same time, you need to talk to your child about their own contact online and what to avoid, like the practice of using technology to bull another person. And keep the lines of communication open. Don't just talk at your children, talk to them. You have to be willing to listen to their concerns and problems. They need to know that you will listen and not just judge or criticize. Number three, review applications and content. You can review the apps on your child's smartphones, tablets, and computers. Your level of review and involvement will depend on the age of your child. If you give a cell phone to a younger child, one of the conditions can be that you have complete access to the device. Your child should know that you are monitoring his or her activities, and you need to call them on things they do that are not appropriate and use those teaching moments. Create similar accounts on the same social media sites as your child. Have them friend you so you can, you can not only monitor what they're doing, but what their friends are saying and posting. Number four, parental features or monitoring software. Some devices allow you to adjust application rating restrictions to prevent the download of an adult-oriented app. You should explore the device. As the parent, you need to decide what an appropriate level of intervention is for you and your child. Monitoring software is available to keep track of a child's cell phone activity, such as My Watchdog. iRecovery allows all deleted pictures, texts, and other data to be recovered from iPhones, iPods, and iPads. If you choose to employ monitoring software, you should be honest and upfront with your child. Your child should know that you might conduct random checks. You should not hide your actions from them. Contact your cell phone carrier to determine what monitoring features they offer. Learn how, you can, how your carrier can help you and what services they offer in the event your child is victimized. Be proactive about your level of cyber education. Learn about the apps your child is using. See how the apps work, what's involved, and what are the potential dangers. And that's one reason why we went over all those apps that are common right now. Number five, balance trust and accountability. Every parent must find the balance between trust and accountability with their child. We need to teach our children how to use technology responsibly so that they do not get themselves into trouble. Constant monitoring and oversight will likely cause a parent to violate their child's privacy and fail to teach lessons of personal responsibility. This is a tough balance for most parents and it is critical that we find the right balance for each child. And number six, once you hit send, you can never get it back. This is the toughest lesson for most children to comprehend. They think that only their friends can see what they post. They believe mistakenly that the public will never be able to access their private posts. They are wrong. They have no conception that what they post can impact them later in life. Colleges, scholarships, employers, and even prospective dates scour the internet to learn about someone and to decide if that person is worthy of trust. If you do not want something out there in the world, don't hit send. A good rule of thumb is, if you do not want your grandmother to see something, do not post it. So that one's a pretty important one. The, there is no easy answer for parents struggling to navigate this new cyber world. I believe that it is most important that we educate ourselves about the technology our children will be able to access and have open communication about the risks and dangers that can flow from them. By educating our kids and ourselves, we can minimize the risks of negative consequences from the use of technology and maintain all of its benefits. Okay, so now that we've gone through all of this information about apps and keeping our kids safe, for my paranoid parents out there, I have got some, I've got 10 best apps for paranoid parents. 
So the first one we're going to talk about is FBI, FBI Child ID. Um, this was created by the Federal Bureau of Investigation. This app lets parents store their children's photos, plus other identification, height, weight, hair, eye color, age, uh, for quick access if a child ever goes missing. The information is stored on the iPhone only until parents need to send it to authorities. Notable features include safety tips, checklists for what to do if something happens to your child, and shortcuts to dial 911 or the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. Parents also have the ability to email info immediate to law enforcement agencies if the unthinkable occurs. And it looks like this is free for the iPhone or the iPad. So those are your iDevices. The next one is iEmergency ICE Family Pro. ICE stands for In Case of Emergency, and this app allows parents to store important health data, allergies, prescriptions, medical conditions such as diabetes, for an unlimited amount of family and friends. Uh, you can enter information about each, person, each person's doctor, hospital affiliation, health insurance, and even attorney contacts. The idea is to put all the data you need access to in one easy-to-find place. A free verse, a version called ICE Eye Emergency Lite is also available, available, but it allows parents to store only three pro profiles with limited information. Um, if you wanted to purchase the pro version, it does cost $2.99, and that is for iPhone and iPad. I'm sure if you have um, an Android, you could type something in there, and they're going to have something similar to that. Uh, the next one is Find My Kids Footprints. Ever wish you could know where your child is at all times? Using GPS in real time, this app helps you to keep track of and automatically locate where your child goes um, with their phone. If they travel alone, you can confirm that they arrived at a specific destination. Or if he's meeting up with friends, um, they can confirm each other's locations. Location info is never shared with anyone else beyond those who have permission to see it. And the data is saved for later review. Even though the app is free, parents will need to purchase a subscription for, tra for the tracking feature. So it is, a free, to, it is free to download. Uh, but the service requires a monthly fee, and again, that's through your iPhone or iPad. Uh, they also have the Life360, which is kind of a little family tracker, and that is free as well. I know you can get that on Android or, or iPhone. The next one is uh, Family Tracker. Don't just track the kids, track the whereabouts of the entire family. This app keeps tabs on anyone you like, but only if the other person accepts the one-time tracking request. The mm -hmm. app uses a built-in messaging system um, separate from standard text messaging that allows you to contact family members and receive notifications that they read your messages. You even have the capability to get your kids' attention by setting the device to play a loud, annoying siren. For each device you wish to track, you'll need to buy the app separately. An optional, subs um, an optional subscription service is available for you to view and export GPS data from previous days. It does cost $5.99 to have the family tracker. It's available on iPhone, iPad, and Android, but it keeps you up to date with everyone. Next one is your sex offender search. If you just moved into a new neighborhood or you're planning to, you can research any neighborhood with this app. Simply activate your smartphone's GPS and connect to the National Sex Offender Registry to locate registered sex offenders and predators in the area. You can search by name, address, and zip codes, and result will be displayed on an interactive map. Click on a location for more details, such as pictures, names, addresses, and a list of offenses. Um, for the Pro version, it's $1.99. That's for iPhone, iPad, and Android. But I do know for a fact if you go into your store and you type in sex offenders or anything along those lines, they do have some free apps that you can get. So we're going to keep the countdown going. And the next one we come to is um, Food Additives 2. Whether or not your little one has a known food allergy, this app allows you to search for various unhealthy food additives. 
The free version contains information about 50 nasty additives, but a full app version with a list of 450 plus additives is available for $3.99. The list of additives can be stored by name, risk level, symptoms, and diet. For example, gluten-free. The database is stored on your phone for easy access, even when you can't go online. So you do, you can get this as a free uh, download through your iPhone or iPad. I'm sure that if you have an Android, you could just type in some type of food additives and something's going to come up. The next one is Baby Monitor HD. Uh, the next generation, Baby Monitor. From Engadget, this camera video app allows you to keep tabs on your baby's crib. Other features include password, protected audio and video, audio alerts, and infrared night mode but only specific cameras, mostly your Ycam and Wi-Fi Baby, are compatible with this app. So check wifibaby.com and sunshineapps.com before purchasing Baby Monitor HD to make sure that you have the correct combination of hardware and software after purchasing. Um, so it's $9.99, but you have to make sure that your camera is going to be compatible. But I wanted you to be aware, I'm sure if they have this one, they've got tons more of them. So you can go into your app store and you can just type in uh, some type of baby monitor. The iCam or the webcam video streaming. Uh, this app, which has been featured on Today, CNN, and Good Morning America, allows you to watch live video feeds from any room in your home with a mobile device. To be monitored, each room needs to have a constantly running computers with webcams and the app's capable software installed. The app developer's website has full instructions and very short list of cameras that are not supported. You can make a donation via in-app purchasing to help reduce the company's server costs. So for $4.99, you can get this on iPhone, iPad, and Android, and you can do a video streaming of your home. The next one is Alarm.com. Get real security with a complete system that includes mobile monitoring, arm disarm the um, system remotely, turn light sources on and off, and watch live and recorded video through installed cameras. Parents can get alerts about a variety of household happenings when the children get home from school, when someone is poking around the medicine or liquor cabinet, or when someone has changed the thermostat or left the garage door open. A subscription is required for a specific Alarm.com home monitoring service, and the app only works um, with certain hardware. Pricing varies depending on the specific services you are interested in, but you can purchase Alarm.com products and services just through certain retailers. Uh, because the company does not sell directly to the general public, check the Alarm.com website for details. So it is a free download. Services are required through Alarm.com subscription, and you can get this on iPhone, iPad, or Android. Secure a phone. Uh, these, there are apps that locate your children, but how about that tell you how fast they're driving? This app can do so by using the smartphone's built-in GPS, plus the Secure Offenses feature sends notification to your, if your child goes beyond a designated geographic area. Uh, parents can view 90 days worth of map data using what company website calls a breadcrumb trail and access reports that include addresses and history for all the alerts sent by the app. All this is done in the background of your smartphone via GPS, but a monthly subscription of $8.95 is required. It is free to download. You do have a service monthly fee, but it's good for your iPhone and your Android. Now, I just touched on 10 of the best apps for paranoid parents. Some free, some not so free. Uh, but if you go to your your particular store, whether it's Google Play or iTunes or whatever it may be, you're going to be able to access something that's along all of these lines, and you may even find other ones that we didn't talk about. They're going to kind of help you keep track of your children and what they're doing um, on those devices, as well as what they're doing in your home when you're not there and things like that. So these were the 10 best apps for paranoid parents. All right, well, that concludes our class of apps parents should know about and safety tips to keep our kiddos safe. 
I want to thank you for taking this class. You are on your way to keeping your child more, um, keeping your child safe, keeping your family safe, and just by having that communication and not blocking those barriers, you're really going to have a great relationship with your child in the long run. Um, without you, there would be no reason for these classes. This was a very serious topic, and I touched a lot of touchy subjects. And I apologize if I offended anyone. That was not my intent. My intent was just to spread the word um, because sometimes we don't actually really know what our kids are doing on these devices and what they're doing them on. Uh, what kind of apps are they using? So if you would like to talk to me about anything that involved this class, please get in contact with me. Um, please maybe talk to your child about some of the things that we talked about directly. Maybe even... Uh, get a get their phone to see if any of these apps may be on there so you can question why they have them, what they're doing. Um, it is your child. You are the parent and you are allowed to look through their stuff whether they think you're violating them or not. Um, you aren't. They are not They are not adults. They are minors. And that's our job as parents is to quote unquote violate their privacy. So um, with that being said, I want, would love for you to be looking for more of these stream classes to come. Any of them. Um, make sure that if you are a part of the computer class pass that you are listening for your code and that you get that to me so I can get you marked down for taking the class. Visit us at www.ppl.lib b.in.us um, and I also take one-on-one -on -one appointments that are absolutely free so call me today to talk about your technology needs and again thank you so much for taking this class you are one step closer to keeping your children safe this class could not have happened without the following websites and images and information. Thank you to the following websites and images and information for allowing us to use your site as part of this class.